Good afternoon, everybody. Uh, we are here for our uh, second uh, public relations uh, webinar with Jill McGuckin. And uh, just a brief background about Jill. She's, she, is, she does have more than 20 years of public relations experience on the national and the regional level, and she specializes in the entertainment industry. And today uh, she's going to be talking about the elements of a press kit and why they are important. So we're all here, Jill. We're very interested in what you have to say, and uh, I'll just let you take it from here. Thank you. Thank you, David, and hello to everyone. And I sure appreciate this opportunity to share with you a, a very important part of your publicity campaign and your PR campaign for your company, and that's the elements of a press kit and why they matter. And let's just understand what a press kit is. And this will just be another uh, a part of your publicity campaign that really is representative of your company, what you will offer to the media with information about what your company, um, the publicity that you need for your company. So let's understand what a press kit is first. It's a news and background information presented in a format that reporters need and relate to. And understanding this can make a difference in whether your company does or doesn't get the publicity it deserves. And this also, we hope today, will also help you determine whether you even need a press kit for your company. Not every company needs a full press kit. So when a reporter asks you to send a press kit, what's he asking for? He's asking you to send a package of news and information he can use for story ideas or as background information and he's expecting the contents to be written in a journalistic style and printed in a specific format. And for most publicists in my company, we use the AP style book for our uh, writing techniques and very common uh, accepted style for newspapers and some magazines. When the reporter calls, he says, send a press kit, he's want to read through brochures or product flyers or try to work through any advertising copy to figure out what your company does. He wants you to make all that very obvious for him. So when do you use a press kit? Let's for that one. Okay. I want to use a press kit. When you have a lot of information on a single topic to share with representatives of the news media, you put it all together in a press kit. And as I said earlier, that's a collection of news and background material presented in the form of news releases, backgrounders, fact sheets, and so on. And believe me, the publicity police won't arrest you if your press kit contains a brochure about your company but it really can be a waste of money because rep reporters really loathe digging through hype of promotional material for the facts. And as a publicist, when I present, and I would encourage you, if you work with PR firms, what you're presenting to the media are facts, and we'll talk more about why that's so important. Um, you're lo loadable from your website. It can be available in a hard copy, or created in a format that you can email. And my experience after 9-11, most media outlets wanted everything sent by email because of the strict rules of, um, of safety. So they had to, everything had to be ex inspected or, in, or even x-rayed before it went to the newsrooms. Well, that's changed now. And everything, uh, now it's acceptable, again, to send the hard copy for... But for about three or four years, everything was sent by email. And, um, of course, the easiest and most cost-effective approach for a hard copy kit is just a packet, packet folder designed to hold the material. Uh, other approaches are often wise or appropriate. And as I mentioned, downloadable press kits can be available as PDF files or Word files. But I must caution, if you send material to the media in a PDF format, make sure that the text can be copied from that document and pasted into the user's articles or into a Word document so that they can copy-paste facts and they'll get the facts correctly. And it doesn't um, from the reporter that he can't copy your PDF. So it's very important that 
I call it user friendly, that anything we present to the media, either you from your company or your publicist or your representative for your PR, send information that's easy for the media to work with, copy paste, access by downloading. Um, so let's look at when we want to use a press kit. We know that the goal of it is to quickly and in an interesting way inform the reader about your company. Use a press kit when quite simply it's a, a stand -on press release is not enough. So this includes when you are perhaps looking at our slide, introducing a new product, including a magazine, a book and or a magazine, which I know you publishers can relate to, attempting to educate the media on a complex topic or issue, using an individual to the media as an expert resource to interview in the future. You're seeing a newsworthy event. You're seeing a significant change in your business, such as a merger. You're making any kind of significant announcement that affects the community, including a new company opening and new jobs coming in. So a press kit can contain a great deal of information, especially if the topic is complex and needs to be broken down into smaller units. And it can contain just a few elements. Let's, for instance, to promote an expert to a group of trade magazines, you could use a cover letter detailing how the expert might be useful editorially, a police offering tips or advice on the topic from the expert, a biography of the expert, and a shot. Now, that's a pretty slim folder if it's printed hard copy, but it's enough to get the expert a solid place in a writer's files. Let's introduce a new juice in a test market through an in-person media interviews with brand manager, for example. So you would assemble a press kit that would include an announcement release, a backgrounder on the company, a product photo and caption, a product fact sheet, and a brief biography of the brand manager. Now, we're going to explain what all these different elements are that make up the press release. So let's look at the press kit elements. When we present information to the media in a format they expect and they can work with, uh, press kits can contain any number of the following elements and contain other less common elements as well. But today we're going to look at the typical document formats and how to use them. So let's look at uh, first a press release. Press release or tip sheets answer the questions who, what, when, where, why, and most important, how. Press releases also called news releases are news announcements that answer those questions. The primary question a reporter or of TV, a media outlet, will ask, which is, why will my readers, viewers, listeners care? What's in it for them? In a newsworthy information, a press release makes a case for the topic's relevance to the media outlet's audience. Tip sheets are a specific type of press release, one that offers a list of tips or nuggets of advice, usually in a bullet or list format. So it must have a press release or a tip sheet. If there's no news, there's no reason for the press kit. And we really want to remember that why. Why are we sending it? Because there's news there for the media outlet, for their readers that will answer what the um, backgrounder or uh, bio, biographical information provide exactly that, background information. They provide biologic, biographical information about the management team, a company's history, a product category overview, an advertising campaign, description or anything else that's useful background information that's not news or an announcement. The backgrounder's job is to tell the reporter or researcher more about a specific subject, in-depth information that's not appropriate for a press release. In addition, 
information for those needing it. It's additional information for those needing it. Imagine putting one aspect of your story under a magnifying glass. That's a backgrounder. For instance, announcing a new product in a relatively unknown category. Include a category backgrounder to upgrade the re update the reporters about that category. Engaging the trade media to call you for in the future for articles addressing your areas or expertise. Include a one-page background, a biographical backgrounder written in the third person. Announcing a new cam advertising campaign. Backgrounder on the history of your company's advertising programs. Uh, to follow, we'll look at an example of a backgrounder. Now let's look over the different elements of a fact sheet. A fact are easy to read. Just like Sergeant F Friday used to say on Dragnet, they're just the facts, ma'am. A fact is a list of bulleted points that contains specific information that expands on general, general information provided in a press kit. It also can feature background information in a bullet form. Here are typical covered by fact sheets and press kits. Detailed product information. This is found on our screen right now. To and we're still on press fact sheets. One product information. Bullet point could be commonly asked questions. A company use structure. Key facts about a company or an organization. Special event details. Statistics. Back on issues. So don't confuse a fact sheet with a backgrounder, which is written in prose and paragraphs. A fact sheet should contain bulleted points that provide useful information in anticipation of a reporter's questions. And we will look at a sample fact um, in just a moment. And many times, uh, my experience with fact sheets these to be so specific because these are really the questions that we want that specific reporter to ask our, if in particular TV interviews, to cover or ask the person being interviewed from your company. So the fact sheet to me is one of, of a very important document in a press kit. Is specific what it will follow. And we'll, now let's touch on photos for a moment and. I'll add that being an entertainment publicist, I work with actors, musicians, public, and they're very great at standing up and entertaining and conveying their information. But to get a good photo of them sometimes is very difficult. Uh, many people don't realize the importance of a photo uh, in a press kit and for coverage of a band, a film, an actor. Photo, the digital art, and you know in the, um, the magazine business, photos are so important. So I want to talk uh, talk about that part of that element of a press kit and why the photos are important. Now, not all press kits require photos, but they are a wise addition for certain types of situations. You want to include a photo when it makes sense. When, for example, you think the coverage of your story would be incomplete without a photo illustrating announcement. Typical and appropriate press kit photos include, and we'll go over this from our screen, detailed product, I'm sorry, headshots of the people quoted in the press kit or are quoted on the press release, a head of the expert the press kit is promoting. Shots, especially for new product launches, registrations for food publicity, the new visual or artist renderings when announcing a specific move to a new location or new headquarters, action shots of the end users of your product, showing how people will be using the product or, or service you're introducing, and um, I know as publishers you understand this, but um, always the photos need to be 300 
dpi dot per inch and a large screen size so that when I take photos from my photo shoots, I want them 8 by 10 5 by 7 as large screen size as possible. And I'm speaking of digital art now so, because on the uh, for the media, they certainly can reduce the and crop photos, but they would never be able to enlarge it. And we know that even some um, people use 200 dpi, but the 300 dot per inch just gives the best reproduction when it's printed in hard copy in magazines, newspapers, and other entities. That's very important. Um, now I'm going to look at and explain another element of a press kit. And those are clippings. And clippings are reprints of articles that, quote, you or an individual at your company or refer to your company. You include clippings only if they're relevant to the topic covered in the press kit. For example, a new product announcement press kit might include a trade magazine article about the expected explosive growth in that product category. Press kit promoting an individual as a topic expert could include reprints that showcase the expert's knowledge. While other reporters have found this person's knowledge knowledgeable enough to do an interview, we must note that copyright laws are required and you need to get that uh, the publication's permission to reprint article for distribution. Sometimes this requires pay fee, and there is one entity, the Copyright Clearance Center, www.copyright.com, that streams like the process, but I recommend contacting the publication directly uh, for permission to uh, reproduce the clipping, especially if the clipping is from your local newspaper or a magazine you have a close relationship with. The permission process applies only to the use of publications, clippings on your website, um, and you might be able to link to the clippings at the media's outlet's website rather than reproducing the clip on your own website. Uh, now let's look at when we do not include clippings. Uh, not include a clipping if it's um, of routine mail appointments. You would not include a clipping that does not contribute to the story in some way um, that we are um, sensitive about. You include more than four reprints. You be careful and not send badly photocopied or hard to read clippings. And you must send your clipping with the publisher's name and the date uh, that when it ran. That's very important to include clippings that tell where they're from and when they ran. You can use a scanner, which we do, which is wonderful for uh, for preparing your clippings, or you can mount them and Xerox them. But be careful, and of course, you don't want to copy copies of copies. Uh, if they're too hard to read, they just look uh, unprofessional, and the media is not going to look at them or consider using them. And let's touch on our sales collateral. Again, we're looking at our elements of the press kit. Um, Journalists will ignore collateral like brochure and other sales material tucked into press kits, but uh, marketers include it anyway. And if you know your world will end, if you cannot, if you don't include sales literature, then limit it to one piece. Limit to one piece, perhaps a company brochure or a product spec sheet, substituting for a fact sheet. But you can't. But you don't use your sales collateral as a substitute for, a press, for press releases, backgrounders, or fact sheets. Uh, reporters just don't have the patience required to dig through marketing material for useful information. So you want to make it very. You want your one piece of sales collateral to support your press kit and why you're sending it uh, to the media. On a cover letter. The cover ties your packages together by explaining why you're sending the press kit and suggesting ways 
the recipient might use the enclosed material. Sometimes a cover letter, uh, sometimes it's a pitch letter, but sometimes it isn't. If it's a cover letter, you want to clip it to the front press kit or tuck it inside the right pocket. If your kit positions an expert source for future interviews, state that in the cover letter and suggest article topics that expert that the expert can contribute to. If the press contains background information on your company that you'd like the reporter to add to the files, say so and let the reporter know how you how you can how she can reach you or the appropriate contact when she needs more information about your company. And I, I want to talk about that just your contact information on any material you send to the media must have a contact uh, must contact person uh, that's uh, easy to reach with a phone number and an email. So any information sent to the media in your press kit, most importantly, not only in the cover letter but within it, and you might want to enclose your um, business means in your hard copy. And if you send this by email, make sure that the appropriate contact information is very clear and easy to find. Nothing frustrates um, um, a, a reporter, a reporter more, a producer, a uh, radio personality, or a DJ if they can't find the contact uh, for the information sent to them. So they need to know how to reach you quickly in case they want to inter interview or include your information uh, in a story reading. Also, if the press kit announces a new product introduction, say that and explain why you think that the readers, viewers of that media outlet will be interested. So you can use your cover letter to explain that. And the press kit contains background information about an expert you're pitching to a television talk show producer. Make sure your cover editor, editor, letter acts like a pitch letter and suggest interview or segment topics that are unique to the personality of that specific show. It's very important that your cover letter will target for the media. You can target them while you're reaching out to them and explain to them and suggest interview topics and also why this expert or your product would be interesting to your their readers and viewers. I'm going to speak real quickly about how you would package your press kit. And I use this the old-fashioned two-pocket folder. And we choose recycled material and as much recycled paper as we can. And we keep it very um, inexpensive for our clients. So you think, uh, don't let your advertising agency talk you into putting a chunk of money into printing special die-cut, foil-stamped, one-time use folders that will do absolutely nothing to encourage a reporter to look inside. One situation where packaging isn't everything, uh, reporters and producers are not the kind of people or who, are, or who are impressed by extravagant folders. What impresses them is solid information they can use with little effort. If you're already using sales folders as part of your marketing campaign, then by all means produce extras for your press kit materials too. In general, though, when budget is an issue, put your money into content and not packaging. Real quick about making sure your press kits get noticed. I want to use the company Schwinn as an example. Uh, Schwinn once included an appropriate attention-getting gimmick, a Bible horn, with press kit folder. Uh, there was probably internal discussion about whether it was wise to send the bike horns, since many editors say they don't like these kind of tricks, and they're not allowed to accept gifts. And by the way, um, newspapers, uh, journalists, uh, it's acceptable to send or gifts, uh, examples like this, the bicycle horn that are valued $50 or less or, or accepted.
acceptable. Anything over fifty dollars, you is absolutely you should not send that to them, and that will put them in a bind of accepting a, a, a something of ex, of um, expense. Uh, I even know of in Austin, one of our TV affiliates will not be, will not accept any gifts and anything that are gift products or have any value. They keep it all together in a pool, and at the end of the year, at one of their uh, company parties, they'll tag all the gifts, and people will draw numbers, and they'll win gifts. So you see they really want to keep it separate, gifts versus media coverage. So remember, $50 or less are acceptable. Um, let's go back to our Schweizical horn. Um little horns did the job, though, because the recipients were both intrigued and charmed enough by the gimmick to open the press kit to discover why Schwinn sent both. So they might not have even known it was from Schwinn, but they get a, bi- uh, a bike, bicycle horn, so that made them open this press kit, and then that got them the attention. Uh, these kinds of attention getters often do what they're supposed to do, which is to get the media materials noticed. This helps you with follow-up calls because reporters remember these materials. Um, they're a good idea when the topic lends itself to an attention-getting device and when there's a budget for it. Uh, and also, uh, press kits might become obsolete because, uh, we'll go into that in just a minute, but also, um, you might see that press kits might become obsolete because more reporters, editors, and producers are more comfortable with getting email and website um, emails and websites. So we're sure of the fate of the printed press kit, uh, but in the mail or other services to deliver them, you want to make sure the contents are labeled outside and that you include information on how to reach you with questions on the outside of the package. And for McGuckin Entertainment PR, we print our own mailing label that includes my logo and our address and a phone number. And that goes on the outside of the package. And it's a white label with red. So when we do our follow-up phone calls to the media, we can say, oh, you got the package. Remember, it had the bunny on the logo. If they're not familiar with our company, they had the bunny on the front. Oh, yes, saw the that. You know, they can go back and find that. And these people, uh, particularly in the entertainment world, and if they're doing, if they're assigned to review CDs and DVDs, we understand from these editors that they're receiving, and many of your uh, editors in your magazine business, I'm sure, also are receiving um, two and three mail container fulls of new releases per week. So, um, being a, something that can be identified by the hard copy, the logo on the outside, there's a attention getter that they can go back and find your package quickly. That's very important. I want to remind you that um, at the same time, remember that face-to-face meeting with media representatives will be always, will always be important ways to introduce them to your company and services, and you'll want to hand them relevant background material at these meetings. So you're going to need hard copies for uh, meeting face meetings with media and also for press conferences and special events. And we'll be talking about that in the next few months, um, about um, creating hard and what you'll need for those kind of for special events and press conferences. So we know that more people are getting their information from the web, either as electronic press kits or loadable, but there will always be a need for the hard copy for these face-to-face meetings. So we must continue to develop these and we'll uh, and create these in a very professional manner so that you'll, the media will want the information. It will be easy for them to find and it will also be a very professional presentation. So let's look at an example now of a bounder. Okay, this is um, something we developed on behalf of Dragon's Lair Comics and Fantasies, and that is a comic 
shop, store outlet in Austin that's now expanding and starting to franchise. So let's look at this very text um, written text um, heavy. Uh, remember that the founder provides exactly that. It's background information. And it's being a comic book store, it's the history of the store. Also an overview of the different products that the comic book store um, and also within that we've threaded within that information about now this uh, Dragon Slayer Comics and Fantasies is starting to expand into other markets. So that's a thread through uh, this uh, sample of a backgrounder. And um, it's a pager. I'm not sure if everyone wants to read all the way through. Uh, we can look at each paragraph. We explain immediately in the first paragraph the location and what they do. Provide comics, games, graphic no novels, art collectors, uh, and, and DVDs. They're friendly and knowledgeable. And we talk about some different brands they represent that everyone will under would know that if they have an interest in the gaming world. We are talking about on the third paragraph their new franchise is open. So not only are there Austin, San Antonio, now Bellevue, Washington. How the store is a, an award winner uh, nationally and locally, the next two uh, paragraphs. Then we say the stores in Texas are award winners. We look down at maybe a typical day so that media will know uh, what happens in like, the Austin store. They'll have fundraisers for overseas troops. They have their, their free comic book days. They, do, they have contests for children. Uh, Contest. The last paragraph on this page, now we're going into the history of the store. It started in 1986, and it's about some of the different um, graphic co the comic book writers that are, uh, have made special appearances in the store. I'm going to the next page of this document. Then we give a little more behind the scenes uh, and some community work. Nice last paragraph about Dave Wheeler, who's the owner and uh, of Dragon Slayer Comics and Fantasies, and his credentials and his involvement in his trade industry nationally and regionally. As you see at the bottom, we have contact information for each of the stores and a phone number. This is our backgrounder. Now let's look at our next example, and that will be a sample press release. A sample of a press release that was issued, uh, a recent campaign I did on behalf of a special documentary screening of Texas on uh, June 19th. So again, we have the date, subhead. And remember in our press release, we're going to tell the who, what, when, where, why, and how. So this press release will cover all those topics. They will uh, send for the media receiving it exactly why they're sending it, uh, why we've sent it to them, and why we think it's important for their readers uh, to uh, know about this special screening. And... Um, Paragraph you'll see talks about the special screening that happened last Saturday. The third paragraph even gives more information about the documentary and conveys that Danny Glover is the executive producer and that the family and the filmmakers will all be going to the national premiere of the screening this coming weekend. And part of the big uh, documentary film festival, Silver Docks, in Maryland. Uh, we more you see in the third paragraph the film details. This will give more uh, could be lifted out and a report actually just say those words and give it totally information about the film. We give them exactly what they need so that we know that our messaging, which we've talked about before, that we're on target with our messaging, and then we give more background information in the last paragraph about 
the production of it and who are some of the players in it and contributed to it, uh, as including the producers and the writers. Uh, we, Of course, these days, we always want to include the website. And then we have the contact information that either the producer will be easy to find or I'll be easy to find. Easy to find. And I will say that we've generated quite a bit of media response regionally around the press release. And uh, we hope to come back and even uh, after this screening, um, this in the fall to come back and even hit the bigger markets in Texas. So this is a sample of a press release that covered the who, what, when, where, and why. Now I'd like to show you a sample of a fact sheet for a nonprofit. This is a little different than what I said because it does have a bit of a prose in there. Uh, this is a nonprofit that will be celebrating its fifth year uh, in September, the Health Alliance for Austin Musicians. And since it's a service uh, to others, we use a compelling quote from one of our member musicians. And the Health Alliance, and we put our mission statement here. So it's very clear that this fact sheet is about an organization that provides access to affordable, affordable health care services to Austin's low-income, uninsured, working musicians with a focus on prevention and wellness. We go through our service providers, then we start with our hardcore facts, and that's really why it's so important um, when you're fact sheet that you give relevant facts that the media can build their story off of. We've, As you see in this bottom paragraph, services de delivered, and we give 6,500 clinic services, and we talk more about how it's all broken down. I'm going to go quickly now. The second page, again, very fact. Uh, that's what we want these reporters to have. That's what we want the media to know. We want them to ask, oh, 80% of your members earn less than 16000 a year. They might ask that question, and that would give the representative of the Health Alliance uh, a reason to respond and talk more about what the services are and why, why this Health Alliance for Austin Musicians is important. As you see uh, in this first group of uh, page two Health Alliance fact sheet, we did include information and details about excuse me, our fifth ham benefit day that's coming up. And then we have some background information. More than 8,000 musicians live here. And then why what they contribute to our economy. We talk more about our uh, our health providers and it's almost unheard of that our largest Seton family of hospitals and St. David's Foundation work together like this to provide this service, but it's a model that many other city, no other city has, and we've been getting a lot of national interest now about how to help cultural um, communities like musicians here in Austin through already established health providers, how they can get additional health care for affordable price. And then we give information at the bottom of this page. Uh, for more information, we give all our different health providers and their, um, and you see then we give the work of how is ongoing, how to reach us. And then page three, I, I included this long fact sheet because with a nonprofit, uh, we have a very strong, uh, we always would hope that a nonprofit would have a very strong board of directors that crosses over through the community. So we include our board of directors and their titles to show that the Health Alliance is supported by many different aspects of the of Austin's uh, business community. And really, in reality, uh, the story is that we're keeping these musicians, our member musicians, out of the emergency rooms, which cost us all money uh, by this preventive and w preventive and wellness. Uh, part of our Health Alliance program, and we have member musicians to go in once a month for a, uh, once a year to continue being members for a, a health check. So it's a very uh, program. This shows the support of diverse uh, industries across the city that support it. So that's a example of a fact sheet. I know we're going quickly. There's a lot of information here, but uh, and I see our contacts on the bottom, we've included 
a representative from each of our health providers because if there was a story perhaps that um, they might want to go to the St. David's Foundation because they do the provide free dental care through mobile dentists. If they were interested in dental health or had a story with that angle, well, they'd go directly to the St. David's Foundation uh, representative. So having your contact information very clear and for someone that's easy for the media to reach on all your R materials are very, very important. Okay, Beth, and let's just look at a photo. And this is uh, photos. And this is a headshot. And um, this is a, uh, a personality in Dallas, uh, Hugh Haywood Savage, and he's a TV personality. Uh, so, uh, a column for Fort Worth, Texas Magazine. So this is a basic headshot. very approachable, uh, and this would be something we would include if we were sending some information out about him or if it was another art, a musician, we would want a headshot that would reproduce like this. And to get this shot, um, and I encourage you to work closely with your executives, we had we a stylist, we did a consult on his hair, his makeup, he got different beauty done before, you know, 100 something photos to come up with. So, what I'm saying is the media know if it's an amateur shot, so you must use caution and you must present your executive or your company in a professional way, and the photos are just as important. I want to go to the next slide, and this is a fun slide of an 11 piece band. And we included this to show that this shows them and how active they are. And um, this was a magazine article. But it show that it's a big band. It, it opens intrigue. It, acts, it gives them a reason to ask, what's this all about? It's something that they great response when it was reproduced in a publication. And uh, it's very playful. So it doesn't always have to be a rigid Shot. There are or other options and ways to present your folder or in your, your in your press kit photos. Okay, let's go on because we're I want to make sure we leave some time. Just an example of a press kit clip about a response to a press release that we sent out on behalf of the Health Alliance for Awesome Musicians Ham and an annual event called their Corporate Battle of the Bands and. We were very honored that the Austin awesome Statesman picked this up and ran it in local briefing. And remember, we talked earlier how we at least maybe 10 times the response and editorial coverage like this would run versus if we'd run a, an advertisement in the Statesman. And we were very pleased, and it's not always the fact, but if you'll read down in this clip, they were very generous to include um, – people that had donated as part of the price for this corporate battle of the bands, Bismo Studios, Stubbs, C Limits, Music Festival, Straight Music, and then named one of our celebrity judges. So we included enough facts in there that this reporter pulled out what she thought was important and then an incredible way for us to honor our sponsor our events and people that give to our events, and, and also then our judge would be a way, from the go-go's, a way to pull people in to come to the event. So this is an example of a press clip. I want to show you another press clip. It's a little different. Uh, this one is a follow-up to Austin Business Journal, Rand. Uh, we did a kickoff for this corporate battle of the band, and again, uh, we lined it up. Uh, at the end, and put our poster to the side to kind of give the branding of that poster. And then it, we ID the people in the photo. And um, this event was hosted at Chris Logic, which is one of the huge, growing, high companies here in Austin. We're so pleased to have the CEO and President Jason Road, who's been so supportive of the Health Alliance, um, included a photo, and then for the name of that company to be included. These are the kind of clips um, and coverage that, uh, for my client, the, the Health Alliance for Ham, is so valuable when they go back and do future 
fundraising, bringing on sponsors, uh, getting the attention of potential other companies to be a part of either our corporate battle of the bands or our ham benefit day. And we show that we can actually generate coverage and get mention of companies, which again is so generous of the media uh, to mention companies and uh, not just have to use the print ads to uh, thank them. We actually have coverage here in this journal. And then this is one I included that's so totally different and so much fun that I wanted you to see. And this was a clip. And remember, this would be a clip of an event and um, from an event preview. And it's on behalf of the Old Settlers Music Festival. And they have an event um, in the spring. And this is a wonderful, wonderful preview feature that uh, the Austin American Statesman ran. And you see at the top uh, that we had on uh, the front page, we had a little teaser about what's over in life and arts. And then over into the life and arts page, we included, of course, the masthead and the date of the statesman, the teaser that ran on the front page. Then we ran, included the name of the section where the, the, the uh, media coverage ran, the quote. Then we ran the photo with a caption under it. And on the next page, the feature that ran, uh, and it's a preview to the festival, and how generous that the statement on the right side included a box, Old Settlers Music Festival, the when, where, the highlights, and how to get information. And then the is all about this, um, about Papa Molly and why I'm playing the festival and what it means to the Old Settlers to have this kind of music at their festival and then I'm sorry and then that would uh, the page D3 is the jump over to the information that they listed of a clip from um, um, from an advance for an event here uh, again then this can be put in a press kit for a client and then the old settler can use this to go out and solicit, um, perhaps to get even more bands to book them to show that the media is covering her event. So that gives her some clout with other book with booking agents for future festivals and sponsors, and uh, and just to get more interesting. All right, let's look at real quickly at the sample of a cover letter. This was a pitch letter that we used for Dragon's Lair Comics and Festival uh, and Fantasies, and we over did give an overview of why we're sending it. We mentioned the name, and then the last paragraph we uh, um, included by David Wheeler, the company owner, would be a good source of information and some ideas of why they would want to write about. Entrepreneurial and uh, ideas, and uh, and then we could be enclosed within that the company history and a press release, and the company history was that backgrounder. And I'll say quickly that, that from doing old fashioned, and I call it old fashioned because so much goes digitally. We actually mailed hard copies to all the TV in Seattle, and to many media outlets in Texas and Seattle, and we're starting to get our responses as we do our our follow up and. One of the um, media said, I hardly, I hardly ever get a hard copy anymore. It intrigued me that I could get a mailing, a pitch in a pitch letter, and a copy information included. I felt like we had cut through because many times, even doing our follow the media, and we'll talk about that next time, we only get their voicemail. So did they ever really read that email? It's so easy to hit delete. Um really read it all through. So when they get the hard copy, there's almost a bit more of respect that someone would want to, that they'll open it and look through. I'm getting a hard copy press kit. How interesting. And within this very simple, it was a pitch letter, company history, and a press release, we're generating feature coverage for our clients. So you must remember that um, that press kits will get you noticed but they must have it relevant to what you're 
sending it with relevant information, and it has to be something that the media would want to uh, cover, so you must have your points really easy for them to find. Go over just a few more do's and don'ts before we're ends together. And I want to go over really quick uh, how to, what to avoid in your press kit. Okay, here are the press kit don'ts. Don't assume you need a press kit. Don't assume you need a press kit just because you have to get publicity for your company. Not every situation lends itself to these collections of information, to these press kits. More often than not, all you'll need is a press release or a series of press, release, press releases to generate the publicity. Okay? Don't overdo it. <clears throat> Don't... <clears throat> Excuse me. Don't pack your press kit with sales literature. Remember, it's a waste of money. Don't include any more information than is necessary to communicate your story or your message. For example, don't include executive bios if these people have nothing to do with the press kit topic and will not be available for media interviews. Spend too much money. Don't spend a lot of money on press kit material packaging unless you need to convey a certain image for your company, product, or service. A provider of upscale products will want to make certain that the folder and paper look and feel expensive, but these days we know you can even get incredibly good quality recycled paper and products. And But a, a heating and cooling contract, contractor doesn't need to worry about that. So do make it reflect your business, uh, but don't overdo it. Don't spend too much money. <clears throat> I always say send the media outlets, the producers, the editors, the reporters, information that they can uh, – press kit that they can gather information from, but they don't feel guilty dropping it in the recycling bin. Don't forget to look for the story. Please remember. Remember, don't get to look for the story. Don't don't forget to look hard for the story in your press kit, and make sure it's obvious to the recipient. If your press kit is strict background inf information for reporters' files, clearly identify it as such with a cover letter and perhaps even a label. The receiver recipient will just wonder why it was sent, and they will toss it. So make sure that you don't open overlook the story, make it very clear why you're sending the press kit. And on a positive note, what to do with a press kit? Okay, here's the do's of a press kit. Do your research. Do check the pulse of the media you're targeting by making a few phone calls to find out if your contacts for a hard copy of a press kit or electronic version. Stick with the facts. Don't do stick to the facts in your press kit. Remember, a press kit is designed to communi communicate both news and background information. Keep those superlatives and hypes low. They're never appropriate. Include a cover letter. Yes, do include a cover letter that explains how and why the recipient will want to use the material in the press kit. In some situations, the cover letter may include a list of interesting story ideas, and we talked about that. And keep it simple. Keep your press kit as simple as possible, include only what's necessary, and then you track your press kit success. Uh, you keep track of what does and doesn't get used from your press kit, and that will determine, will help you to determine how to approach, to approach the media the next time you produce a press kit speak next month, we will talk about how to track your press kit with success. Uh, when I, uh, the next topic in our July webinar will be development and maintenance of media targets and list. And within that topic, we will talk about follow-up, tracking the success of our press kits, and other ways that we can um, develop and maintain our media contacts. <laughs> now I'm ready for questions. Yes, I love that. Um, uh, how do I time a series of press releases for a special event? We will be talking about special events, but absolutely. And I would say that um, on the goal of the event and what the draw is going to be, 
Uh, we're doing that Ham Benefit Day, and we just sent that September. We just sent a save the date. So this is June, July, August, September, four months out. You wouldn't want to do um, anything less than three months. You must start, if an event, start with press announcements at least three months out. Uh, and then uh, when we do our webinar on, on how our special events and how they'll bring you publicity, we'll look at another time, and we'll look at the timeline even more specific. But three months out, eight weeks, six and four, and we'll talk about that in the future. But you do want to, uh, the farther, it depends also if your media outlet, as you publishers know, your lead time is so much longer than a weekly or a daily newspaper. And I have to say, TV can be so last minute. You want them in the loop, but when you're TV outlets, that will even be a month to three weeks less to book TV interviews. <clears throat> So that would be a, a timeline for that t type of media. Yeah. Okay. Uh, some questions on this end as oh, well yes. that were sent to me. Um, another one uh, from John is, is there a benefit to sending press kits to my local AP in addition to local media outlets? Oh, yes. The uh, local AP, yeah, the uh, Associated Press, particularly if you have a bureau there and you're following what they're talking about and or I would say set up a face-to-face -face meeting and introduce yourself and tell that P reporter what your company is all about and find out if they have an editorial stick schedule or know about your company if they need an expert. But absolutely, those AP bureaus are invaluable. They could be picked up nationally. Okay. Um, let's see here. Hey, and you might have touched on this, Jill, so I apologize if these are repeat. Oh, I don't but mind. At all. It's okay. Uh, is it okay to only use digital press kits, or do reporters want to receive hard copies? I think that a digital is fine, and I, I may have mentioned it might be when you do your research, it would be worth a phone call to the if it's a, related to a big event or a big launch of a product or a, a magazine launch. You know, the time to make that contact is now. A uh, phone call in advance. Say we have something big coming along, coming up, and do you prefer hard copy or will you accept um, the digital? And I'll tell you, some of the newspapers have to give you a, a code to put in the subject before they will accept the larger digital di digital files. So you want to make sure that you're coded right and it doesn't end up in their spam or doesn't get accepted. So you you would media and establish what they prefer to receive in advance. Okay, and then um, I guess you kind of cover that, and then uh, follow up on that is, are there different rules for presenting a digital kit? And I think you kind of... Yes, and um, um, there are. And, and um, so I, I do reach out to them and make sure they're open to receiving it and, that, and make sure that you get past any spam uh, screens and things. So the different rules mainly are just to make sure that it's okay and then make sure it gets past the spam and is received, basically. Yes, because you, okay. you make sure they get the information, that it's not just and, – and, again, the follow-up phone calls, which we'll talk about next time, but there, I, I say research ahead of time and find out what they prefer. Sure. Um, a couple more here. Um, how, how often should we send out a press kit? Is there any sort of rule of I, Very, very important. Remember, it all goes back to – relevance and if there's a relevant topic in your press kit that's covered that that media outlet is going to be interested in so for us yeah we only we had news outlet at the, at the our daily newspaper we also send to the health reporter because we know that she's going to be interested in that health alliance information okay uh let's see here um i think there's one uh, that came from Brenda. Okay. Do you know of what a di digital media kit looks like? Absolutely. You know, it could almost look like this PowerPoint, but it would be in a PDF style. So it would be. Uh, I didn't load one of those up, but examples of those documents. Those are all in Word documents. That photo that I showed, or any photos, they'll usually be in. Um, we use in JPEG. Those can all be loaded in a Word document and saved as a PDF. 
and then you would just go through a page one, two, and three. So it's almost it's exactly the same elements we talked about, but they're loaded into a PDF, and they would be like a slideshow more or less, covering the different er of the diff different elements of the press kit. That, yeah, I, I wish I'd included those, but I had included one, but I didn't. Okay, uh, we actually have a couple, few questions coming. It looks like you had a lot of good food here. Uh, you mentioned making sure that journalists can copy and paste text from our PDFs. What is the easiest way to create the PDFs in that format? It's been um, you need to look at your software. I use Mac, and it seems like we're a little more user friendly. So it would depend on what your Word document and your PDF format will allow. And I'm, I don't know software that easily that well, but I know that. Um, the ones that I'll create, we create here can be copy pasted. So I don't know. Uh, it would be a a a, a, a square. Uh, to look at your software and see if that works. Okay. And also, uh, everyone, you can always contact our pre-press department for any technical questions. There's never, you know, calls for customer support or anything like that. Those are the types of the things that that we can help you with too. So just know that you can always call our, our pre-press department directly. Um, okay, uh, how do I time a series of press releases for a special event? Oh, yes. I, I think I had gotten that from John. Uh, we will be Did talking you? about that in a when we do our special event webinar. Okay. But again, remember that if you're going, and y'all are magazine publishers, think about how long your lead time is. Daily newspaper, um, minimal, four weeks. And a, and a weekly, like we have the Austin Chronicle, their their hard deadline is ten days out from the Monday, ten days out from the publishing date of Friday. So you would even for a weekly want to be four weeks out minimal. TV is going to have less of a lead time because they book all their stuff last minute. But you very important to do your research, find out what these media outlets are covering. Find out what individual reporters have interest. Uh, here we have, you know, business section, transportation can be in the local and state. The lifestyle, we have a, a style writer. That might be a, something that a, a magazine pub would want to uh, approach if there was going to be an issue about a certain um, fashion or something. They, that style writer at the daily newspaper could be interested in that. You need to know what writers are covering. Uh, two more questions. Um, for nonprofits, is it okay to submit sponsorship proposal in the press kit? Uh, no. Okay. They would not be interested. You don't even want them to know. Remember, it's a nonprofit. You you okay. want to keep it clean, clear when you go to the media that you're just bringing them information about the event that's important, but gotcha. they don't need to know how much people have signed on. No. Perfect. Mm -mm. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, and I don't know how you're going to answer this. You might need to figure this out. Maybe I can send these to the attendees um, later. But do you have an example of what a digital media kit looks like? Yeah. I, you send that to me and I'll forward it to everybody here? I don't even know if I even ha I mean, I don't really have one set up right now because most of our information, the way the media gets it digitally would be to download it from the different uh, from our website and we, each one of our clients has um, a page there. And on that page, there would be a current fact sheet, there would be a current press release, there would be good digital art. Since we do um, CDs and things, there would be a real good digital art at the cover of the uh, album or DVD. So for magazines, um, we could put something together, and maybe I can put something together next time. Okay. Have, have it, we just invite the media to go and download from our website, and everyone's welcome to go to um, mcguckinpr.com and take a look at how that's laid out. And we have a new website that we're proud of, so visit that for information. And you'll see total samples there of all different kinds of fact sheets and press releases and boxes and photos. Okay. All right. like it. Uh that's about it. Well, Joe, we'll uh, appreciate your information. We'll probably all definitely um, you be and uh, we'll I guess see you again in uh, four weeks. Look, thank you everyone for your time. I sure appreciate you joining me today. 
Have a good one, everyone. Bye-bye.